Number one, FBI arrests East Haven officers for profiling minorities. In a tragic case of ethnic and racial profiling, four police officers were arrested by the FBI for assaulting illegal immigrants and creating false reports to cover up abuses in East New Haven. These arrests happened as part of a long-term federal investigation into members of the East Haven Department's injustices against the Latino community. According to the federal indictment, the officers assaulted individuals while they were in handcuffs, unlawfully searched and ransacked Latino businesses, and harassed and intimidated individuals who tried to investigate or report misconduct or abuse. These actions drove many newcomers from Mexico and Ecuador to leave the blue-collar city. The four officers involved were Dennis Spaulding, David Cari, Jason Zulo, and Sergeant John Miller. They were all charged on a 10-count indictment that included executing unreasonable searches and seizures, using unreasonable force during five arrests, arresting five people on false pretenses, and then using intimidation and creating false reports to conceal their actions. According to reports, Zulo described taking joy in singling out Latinos. He once told his fellow officer Spaulding in a 2008 exchange that he liked harassing drivers and referred to persons who have drifted to this country on rafts made of chicken wings and are now residing in East Haven. Miller reportedly slapped a man handcuffed in his car, while Spaulding threw a man to the ground and repeatedly kicked him while he was handcuffed, according to the indictment. All four members of the EHPD are purported to have used excessive force during unlawful arrests from July 2007 to 2011. One federal official even called these officers a cancerous cadre of bullies with badges. There are also allegations in the indictment report that Sergeant Miller didn't always follow orders. He did not always follow the chain of command and circumvented his direct supervisor and reported directly to a leader in the EHPD identified only as co-conspirator one. The indictment also says Miller reported to a police department leader described as a co-conspirator one who blocked efforts by the police commission to investigate Miller's misconduct. Spaulding and Kari were found guilty of conspiracy against rights, deprivation of rights for making arrests without probable cause, and obstruction of a federal investigation for preparing false reports to justify the false arrests. In addition to that, Spaulding was also found guilty of the use of unreasonable force by a law enforcement officer. On July 23, 2014, Spaulding was sentenced to 60 months of imprisonment, while Kari was sentenced to 30 months of imprisonment on January 21. Zulo pleaded guilty to obstructing stemming from his filing of a false police report in order to prevent a possible excessive force investigation. He was sentenced to 24 months of imprisonment on December 16, 2013. Miller pleaded guilty to depriving an individual of his rights to be free from the use of excessive force by a law enforcement officer. Judge Thompson credited Miller for his cooperation in the investigation and prosecution of this matter and imposed a sentence below the recommended sentencing guidelines range of 12 to 18 months of imprisonment. In 2014, Miller was sentenced to only four months of imprisonment, followed by two years of supervised release. He was also ordered to pay a $3,000 fine. Thankfully, these disgraced officers were all punished. The next story deals with the case of two narcotics officers who ended up becoming what they were supposed to stop. Number two, FBI arrests two Columbus narcotics officers. In September 2021, the FBI arrested two narcotics officers, John Kachowski and Marco Marino, on charges connected to the distribution of fentanyl and attempts to smuggle other drugs. Instead of keeping drugs off the streets, these officers used their authority to smuggle these substances and accept cash payments from drug dealers in exchange for offering their protection. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District of Ohio, they were involved in a conspiracy for the sale and distribution of around eight kilograms of fentanyl. They distributed fentanyl on at least three different occasions and accepted around $32,500 for approximately one kilogram of the substance. In 2021, Marino helped in the transportation of 47 kilograms of cocaine, making $45,000 for his services over the course of a few months. But there was a catch. According to the authorities, there was no cocaine. Each one of these deliveries was being controlled by federal law enforcement. While the supposed cocaine was being trafficked, Kachowski's job was to make any calls that Marino might need to protect the shipment, including to other law enforcement officials. Unlike the purported cocaine involved in transports, the fentanyl that Marino distributed was real, said U.S. Attorney Kenneth L. Parker. Marino swore an oath to serve and protect our community as a law enforcement officer, and instead, he conspired to traffic enough fentanyl to kill well over one million people. Marino also tried to recruit a confidential informant to traffic drugs with him. He promised that person that he would protect him if law enforcement ever tried to investigate him. The documents also show Marino intended to gain citizenship in Mexico 
as part of a plan to launder drug proceeds. Federal authorities had been on Marino's trail for months. Undercover agents disguised themselves as drug dealers and met with Marino on multiple occasions to pull off fake drug deals. Finally, in September 2021, Marino was arrested by the FBI. He implicated Kachowski in his statement to the authorities and told them that they made an even split from the cash made from their business. During a recorded phone call, Marino said Kachowski had threatened to have Marino's wife and children killed by Sicarios, a Spanish word for hitmen, if Marino spoke about the pair's activities. Pretty soon, though, Kachowski was also put under cuffs. Earlier this year, he was sentenced to nine years in prison by the U.S. District Judge Edmund A. Sargis Jr. After his sentence, Marino apologized to his fellow officers and family members, saying, I am ashamed of my actions. His partner, on the other hand, owned two cars, 21 firearms, and had over $500,000. Authorities say that these properties are only a conservative estimate of what Kachowski would have made from his illegal hustle with Moreno. He pled guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute fentanyl and surrendered these properties as part of the plea agreement. He is yet to be sentenced by the federal court. Wow, this story is truly one heck of a ride. But things get even crazier in the next case, where a troublemaking Hialeah officer gets caught for selling other people's IDs in exchange for gifts. Number 3. FBI Catches Cop on Corruption Charges Back in 2017, a police officer named Raul Castellon from the Hialeah Police Department was arrested by the FBI on charges of federal corruption and identity fraud, but he wasn't acting alone. There was another person involved, a woman named Nalen Gonzalez Diaz. Together, the duo ran the whole scheme that benefited them both, but now they both found themselves indicted. The whole scheme played out when Castellon using his position as a police officer to access confidential information in a database called the Driver and Vehicle Information Database, DAVI. This database contained sensitive information about people's identification, their driver's license numbers, social security numbers, and dates of birth. Castellon allegedly used this information for his own gain, taking screenshots of the data and giving it to his accomplice, Nalen Gonzalez Diaz. In exchange for the information, Gonzalez Diaz would reward him with gifts. Then comes in Gonzalez Diaz. She, along with some of her other co-conspirators, used the stolen information to commit fraud at various retail stores across Florida. They opened retail store credit accounts in other people's names without their consent and used existing retail credit accounts belonging to other people. However, this was not the first time that Castellon had run into trouble in his department. His personnel file showed that he had gotten as many as 13 reprimands since his hiring in 2006. He has been involved in five traffic crashes, suspended four times, and was the subject of five internal affairs investigations, although he was cleared of four of them. In 2012, Castellon was fired from the Hialeah Police Department for violating the rules about the use of his police cruiser. However, he was brought back on the force in 2014 through labor arbitration, a decision that the police chief considered unfortunate. Later on in 2016, Castellon was placed on leave from the department because of the ongoing investigation. The FBI eventually arrested him on March 17, 2017, and he was convicted in court. He was a problematic employee from the start, and his course of conduct has finally resulted in his arrest, which is very regrettable and has brought a day of disgrace to our department, said Hialeah Police Chief Sergio Velasquez. Even the Miami-Dade Police Benevolent Association distanced themselves from this whole situation and left Castellon to fend for himself. The president of the PBA, John Rivera, said, while we have represented Raul Castellon in past employment matters, this case is outside the scope of his employment. Therefore, we are not representing him. Both Castellon and Gonzalez Diaz pled guilty to the corruption, access to vice fraud, and identity theft charges. On July 18, 2017, Castellon was sentenced to five years in prison, while Gonzalez Diaz received a sentence of 81 months. The judge also ordered them to pay back $64,500 in losses resulting from their criminal activities. If you want to support the channel, please subscribe. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time.